Right now we are in Asheville, North Carolina, and we are checking out all kinds of music gear around the city. We're going to check out the Moog factory, we're going to check out some guitar shops. Let's see what we find. So right now we are in Asheville, North Carolina. We are in town for the guitar show that is happening this weekend, but we came up a little early and we are going to do some perusing. Our first stop is going to be over at the Moog factory. We're gonna check that out. They have a cool showroom and presentation they do about the Moog synths. We'll see how that is. And then we are going to check out a few guitar shops, maybe a record shop, get some coffee. Have a good day, hopefully. So come along for the journey. So anyway, uh, yeah, there were things in the 50s that were, uh, you know, kind of early synthesizers. So uh, there's two antenna. Uh, one on the left controls the volume. So if I want to play a note, I pull my hand away. And then the one on the right controls the frequency. And there's basically like a, an electromagnetic field around each one. Or I could take that same signal, pull it out of the filter, go into the uh, pitch. That was just really fun when you start to like speed it up. wrapped up the Moog shop tour. We got to see a really cool presentation about the history of Moog. Lots of really interesting stuff there. I think the thing that I found most fascinating was that Bob Moog actually invented the pitch wheel and the modulation wheel that we see on like every modern synth, yet he didn't have the funds to patent it. So everyone just copied it and there was no protection against it. And that's kind of crazy. It was announced that unfortunately that shop is closing and they are moving locations and the new factory will not have a showroom or presentation or anything, so that is a big bummer, but very grateful that we got to see it and the presenter said we were in one of the last groups that'll get to do this, so cool, but also a bummer, so I'm glad we did it, but I wish more of you guys got to experience it as it was a really, really cool presentation. I want to point out the banjo or the saxophone that we walked by? No, we got trains? Oh, no, no, kidding you. We got trains? and cameras, no banjos, saxophone. No, no, trains? This could be a train, you don't know. <laughs> it's like a sound of a piano, and like saxophones, no, no, flute, flutes. Flutes. What's wrong with flutes? Flute, saxophone. <laughs> oh, and we have a pan flute. Oh, yes. Oh, wait, what do we got? This is that we have a, it looks like an ice, but I don't know if it's a proper ice now. No. It's a $350. Hmm. That's a Chironga, I think. Not music related, but this is uh, original Need for Speed, the Need for Speed. Long box on PlayStation. Pretty cool. 
Yeah, he probably has got music in Oh, that found strat copy. These are, uh, they're nothing special, but they're not too common either, so. There you go, two sound coils. What else do you need? What do you do you suppose it is? I'm guessing these. Is this quadraphonic technical? I mean, I know it's, that's not how, how you'd actually set it up, but you you could set this up to do quadraphonic sound. I don't know what outputs though. Like you're not gonna get that out of an eight track. I'm real interested in this Juno, I'll say that. How much? 29? 90% of our pedals are down. Oh, totally. Cool. Yeah, I mean, we're just looking for any cool stuff for the shop we don't have. I mean, definitely interested in that Juno, though. That's, that's right up our alley. Fresh find. Juno 106, when one leaves, one appears. Well, that was quick. <laughs> Jason yeah. brought me over here and was like, you gotta check this stuff out. So oh, that's awesome. We've never been here before, so we're, we're kind of in the middle of shooting a video. So this is an RD base that has Moog electronics in it from when Norlin owned both Moog and Gibson. Which ties right into what we were doing this morning, so small world. All of that would be electronics in there. That's it. Yeah. RDs are hard to find on their own, but an RD with Moog electronics is... Uh, Route even even still get the thumb rest. Japanese made PB fifty one precision base, so that's cool. No, I'm a big fan of that. It's an American Showcase Strat, if I'm not mistaken. So you kind of get a blend of the uh, the modern stuff, the vintage stuff. So you get the modern uh, neck profile. You get HSS pickups. You get the matching headstock, so that's cool. Kenny, tell me about these. So these the romantic ones. It's my love. I love old parlors, and then once I got into the romantic style, which is just you know anything made between like early 1800s up into like the late early early 1900s, and it's this kind of style body. But these ones I import from Eastern Europe. This one's my prized possession. You know, this is as cool as it gets. We call them anonymous guitars because the any label that's been on it or maker's mark has been lost to time. Right. One of my favorite parts about it is just like that you can see the provenance of all these. Those is before they had spring-loaded capos and they're still screwing. Right, oh back. yeah, yeah. But what makes me happy is whoever was <laughs> playing this back in the day was just like ripping this thing capo <laughs> down there, you know. And it's yeah. Just, you know, these are all nylon string typically. Right. And then these, uh, do you guys mess with the, you use the silk and steel strings before? I've, I have not so tried it. So it's just like a nylon core wound in steel. So oh, it's interesting. So it's super low tension rate. Yeah. So for these ones that are like ladder brace and hide glue, you have to be a lot more careful about sure. the tension and neck. You can get like a lot, I don't know if it's in tune, but 20 year sound yeah. out of like this. such 
such that a sounds cool, awesome. Yeah, resonant thing. Yeah. And you know, it's, I hate to admit this, but it's like I've taken this fucking guitar camping. Right. Yeah, you know, it's like 160 year old instrument. Like it's, people it's, pick it up and like treat it with baby gloves. And like this thing is nah, a player. It's meant know? to be played. It's like, yeah, I mean, it's, you're welcome Dude, to Dude, I would, I would love to. Yeah, it's a, a cool wow. instrument. It projects so much. I know, so being so tiny. That's so cool. And it's just one of those things, it's just like, you just don't see these on this side of the world as much. That's why they're harder to sell than your Gibsons and Martins and stuff, but a lot of wow. times that like songwriters will come in and just fall in love with these, because they're, oh, yeah. I call them just great couch guitars. It's just like, man, you oh, just absolutely. leave that sitting around and just find and you just go find it, and they, they just pull songs out of people, which I fucking love. Oh, that's awesome. They're awesome. So cool. Yeah, and there's something different, that's for sure. Absolutely. You know? that's yeah. It's the first time I've seen one, so yeah, I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. You have a great spread of stuff here, because you've got this I've never heard of, then you've got stuff where you're all the way down the rabbit hole with like the, the Fender Japan and the Aria. And the, yeah, yeah, I love it. Yeah, we have it's a good so cool. You know, that was kind of like our, our two big like mission statements, for lack of a better term, of the shop. Or what I was telling you, having a place that people really feel you know comfortable and welcome and want to come in and really try the instruments out. And then a big thing, too, is we just wanted stuff that you can't go pull off the wall at the fucking Guitar Center and stuff. Absolutely. You know, want something that's, you can come in here and it's like stuff you've never seen before. Even right. somebody yeah. like you, exactly. that y'all do this like we do, and it's still stuff that you're like, well, this oh, is yeah. fucking different. And Always weird, nice to you know. see something unique. Yeah. yeah. It's fun. Dude. We have a good time. Thank you very much for having us. Thanks for being here. I appreciate yeah, you. Stoked, man. Got a t-shirt. It's a nice looking shirt, so we got it. And you know what? That's cool on its own, but just for a little extra embellishment right there in the back. <laughs> Love to see it. This is a gorgeous little shop. So many cool guitars in there, and everything I looked at was like choice. It wasn't just a rare guitar or whatever, it was like a great example of that guitar. So it's easy to assume that they're very picky with what they take in, and I back it. This officially concludes our day of perusing around Asheville, looking for guitars and other cool stuff. This was definitely a success. Finding the Juno 106 was absolutely awesome, but I think it's even cooler to just get to go to these places that we've never seen before and uh, meet some cool people, see some cool instruments, and I'm sure we'll be back to all these places once again the next time we're in town. So I can honestly say, if you're in Asheville, check these shops out, all cool stuff and good vibes all around. Let us know down below in the comments what your favorite thing was you saw in this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, all the good stuff, it really does help out. We'll see you again soon. Bye.